How's it going guys? This is going to be a talking only video where I will kind of summarize what uh, what my impression is of the Line 6 Helix platform after three and a half years. I like to make these videos after about every year or so. So the first thing is um, people listen with their eyes. It's a known phenomenon. If you uh, you can have two identical guitars, absolutely identical in every way except for the way they look. And one looks vintage and the other looks this like a sh like a shredder machine with neon pink kind of body and uh, angles. And all of a sudden, even though it may sound absolutely identical, when somebody sees this metal looking guitar, it's going to sound to them like it's harsh it's gonna sound like it's in your face as opposed to the mellow and vintagey pre-cbs stratocaster sound that you will <laughs> not actually get but again people are listening with their eyes the funny thing happened uh, at the festival where i was where i performed this past weekend after i played i was uh, getting some food and uh ran into somebody who who's um, been to my concert in Canada and uh, we've chatted before he's like yeah this you guys sounded really good and like what have you ever thought of using a helix instead of you going through an app I'm like that's a funny thing you should mention that I'm actually using a helix <laughs> so that just goes to show you that the technology right now with these digital all-in-one digital platforms are it's it's here so start embracing it it's just all about spending the time and tweaking things to your liking and i guarantee you it will sound just as good as your vintage gear or analog gear or your tube valve amplifier all that stuff so I've been using my Helixes for three and a half years. I first went and bought the Helix LT, and I uh, bought myself a Helix Floor, which is my main gigging Helix. I practice on my LT, and I, like I mentioned, take it to questionable gigs where there's dust and rain and spilled beer potentially, and I try try to minimize my usage of the floor so it doesn't break down on me i i, I gotta say that i was skeptical until i uh years ago went to see a show and uh saw somebody using one of those helixes and like wow this is this sounds great i gotta get myself one of those and i eventually obviously did it's just so convenient. When it's working, it's incredible. Every single preset I've dialed in at home, every single section of the song is labeled. I order my presets according to the set list. Everything sounds good, sounds great. All the levels are dialed in. The setup is a breeze. Like this past weekend, I I had five minutes to set up. I just literally put the Helix on the stage, connected my wireless, XLR left and right to the front of the house, took a long quarter inch cable into left mono, into the back of a PV uh, bandit, using the effects loop, everything just works. It feels familiar. I feel the air moving. I can feel the guitar chugging as I'm used to, and uh, it's it's just fantastic. The only downsides of the Helix or the Line Six as a company is that they're using really low quality parts. I've had issues in with my Helix floor where. The foot switches stopped being reliable. Also the expression pedal uh, had to be basically re readjusted. I had to open it up and uh, tighten the screws because the expression pedal started moving off kilter. 
and uh, the LED broke, but after, um, uh, during the repair of the foot switches, call it, call it a coincidence, whatever. But uh, ever since I sent it to line six for repair after that incident, it's been, knock on wood, it's been solid. And uh, I always have a backup with me because stuff can always break when you least expect it. That's what uh, people who are responsible should do. Nothing, nothing will ever work 100%. Computers break down, guitars, uh, wiring can get unsoldered things can just just happen so i always have a backup guitar and a backup helix when i when i can otherwise it's my pod go as uh, as my kind of backup solution so i can finish the show like somehow right it's better to have a limited option with you than no option at all now since starting out on the Helix, there have been so many amazing software updates. So many things that it was lacking, it gained while I was the owner of the Helix. For example, the acoustic simulator, the oversampling, the really accurate transposition and, and harmonization. That is just fabulous right now. The only issue that I see, and I'm on the Line 6 forum, by the way, is there are frequently really serious software bugs that take many, many months to fix. For example, there's this left mono bug that I made a video on last year or two years now, where if you plug something into the left mono jack, it's only the left side until you plug something into the right, then back into the left mono, then it's mono. That's that's absurd. And I've, I've gotten such a run around from line six. They say that first they could replicate it, then they couldn't replicate it. People on the forum argue that that's how it's supposed to work. Why don't you just go in mono? Like, no, I want to go in stereo. That's why I I dialed in my presets to be in stereo and I want to be in stereo for the front of the house and I want to be in mono for my onstage amp. It's a simple expectation that just I always have to remember to do this work around and uh, I have a sound check preset um, so that I, I can verify that that's not going to be happening for my set as I learned as I've learned the hard way. <laughs> uh, my uh, very first like big festival performance two years ago I it came the time came to play that important intro to a certain song and all of a sudden it's like ah, I was only here in the left side horrible really threw me off and then there are some other bugs like they released uh, firmware update 3.15 where they introduced this in my opinion useless uh, enhancement where you can program the bypass behavior for your expression pedal. Like for a snapshot, it's always in a specific state. And then on top of that, you can override it with your foot. Completely useless to me. I've found ways to circumvent that original limitation by using the mix parameter and assigning it to the snapshots. So I don't need this like bypass on top of my bypass that is already programmed into my preset. Simple. But they rolled out this, in my opinion, useless feature and it's been buggy. I had to actually downgrade to 3.11 because it started uh, when you're making changes to one preset in your HX edit, it would override an unrelated preset. And then, you know, I always double, triple check every single thing. And if I make any single change, I always run through all my presets, all my sounds, because I have just so much stuff. I have 
uh, for every gig I go through 25 presets. So all of those 25 presets have to be correct. And then I don't want to obviously inadvertently modify presets that I'm not aware of modif uh, modifying that later on I will discover that they're broken. So that's 3.15 and right now it's 3.6 and they have even worse bugs where the if you assign the percentage of certain parameters to snapshots they just go completely berserk when you start modifying one uh, thing it just alters something else you do a complete restore from a backup that just goes completely uh, to complete chaos or even individual preset restore it just does not obey <laughs> what any logic and that's crazy but that's that's the kind of the lesson with any software you need to you need to make sure that you test everything don't believe the release notes don't believe that it's going to work seamlessly always be a skeptic always uh, for your internal for, for your kind of workflow always make sure that you have run through everything to not have this fun adventure on stage but um other than that this the sounds out of the helix are great contrary to what some of those big shot uh guitars do by running a bunch of external pedals into the helix i think that's that's i don't know laziness or craziness because the helix at this point as of version 3.0 has absolutely every single effect and uh, once you if you don't find it you you haven't looked long enough for example i also made a video recently i was uh, just recently like um, a couple months ago finally dialed in that envelope filter sound which i was struggling with and i thought like what the hell why can't i get my that good sound and it turns out it was always there in the legacy folder of the effect so check the legacy folder that's another lesson so yeah um helix is great if it wasn't if it weren't for the buttons crapping out bugs it's it's a great workflow i uh use two helixes simultaneously restore on one uh, backup on one restore on, on the other I can email my settings to somebody else, which came in handy when the, I couldn't make the tour because of work. And I emailed all of my stuff to this other guitarist and uh, he had my exact same settings. So don't be a snob. Uh, the technology is here. Just be very, very careful because the more stuff they keep adding onto this helix the more bugs <laughs> you may get um so that's that's pretty much it in other news the air quality is in new york is just horrible there's a wildfire in wildfires in canada and it smells like a fire it freaking smells like somebody's burning cardboard boxes I've never seen anything like that. It's actually dark. You can't, you won't be able to tell how dark it is, but <laughs> it's freaking like, it looks like it's like 7 p.m. or something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and catch you on the next one.